When Larry first installed this solar system over a year ago, he told me it cost $10,000. And at the time, I wasn't sure it was worth it, but it's worth every penny. And that's why I have bugged Larry over a year now to do this solar over you because many people still think solar is only for boondocking. We haven't boondocked yet, but we use the solar system everywhere we go, plugged into shore power or dry camping. Actually, because of the system, we call it dry glamping. Dry glamping. The main reason I ignored Alice about making this video that that's hard to do is because I wanted a lot of experience with the system before I shared it with you. Now, a lot of people call it their solar system, but I call it my enhanced electrical system because the solar panels are not the most important part. Our lithium batteries and inverter are much more important. And for us, solar is not about saving money, though we are, downsize and make sense, like, like the, the penny. penny. <laughs> it's about peace of mind and options, knowing no matter where we are, we will have the power when we need it. Yes, we spent a lot of money, though I designed and installed the system myself. I may do a full install video in the future. And we weren't sure if it was going to be worth it, but after using the system for the past 16 months, we know we made the right decision. Though I don't fully understand the system, I see the results, and I am so glad we have it. In this video, I'm going to show you the components of our system, how they work together, and how they enhance our full-time camping experience. I will include a full list of all the components that went into the build and links to our Amazon storefront in the description. Now here in the basement of my RV to go over some of my solar and battery components. Now, what we're looking at right here is actually under the stairs of my fifth wheel. There used to be a wall that went from here across and what I've done is remove that wall and rebuilt the structure of the steps so I can install my batteries, my inverter, and all my electrical components here under the stairs, saving a lot of space. I actually ended up gaining space in my basement because the wall actually used to be right here. So now I've got all this extra space. So first of all, let's go over the batteries. These are four Battleborn 100 amp hour 12 volt batteries and I've got them connected in parallel with 4 aught cable. Now I've got the batteries bracketed down really really securely with an ankle hour bracket on this side and on the other side and then I've got straps uh, ratchet straps on each one of the batteries to hold them in place. Now in addition to that the batteries are mounted on foam. They're mounted on like a piece of rubber foam on the bottom and on the ends to keep them really, really tight. It's really important to have your batteries very securely tightened and bolted down. So this is my 12 volt energy uh, storage. Okay. So this is my MultiPlus. Now what the MultiPlus does is takes all that 12 volt energy and converts it into 120 volt power to power all my outlets in the RV when we're not connected to shore power. The MultiPlus is also a charger. So when I am connected to shore power, if the batteries were low when I connected, it'll go into charge mode and charge the batteries up and get them all nicely topped up. The MultiPlus also works in hybrid mode. Let's say I'm connected to a 20 amp shore power, but I need 40 amps of power in my 120 volt circuits in my RV. Well, it'll take the 20 amps from the shore power, take the other 20 amps that it needs from the batteries, combine them together, work in hybrid mode and provide all the energy that I need in the RV. Now, when I'm finished using that much power, the charger kicks back in and tops the batteries back up. That's what's really awesome about these MultiPlus uh, inverter chargers. Now, in addition to that, under here I have some of my connections. So my 12 volt uh, power that comes from the batteries comes up from the back there and that comes in right here and it comes into a 400 amp catastrophic fuse. It goes into there into a switch so I can shut off the entire battery system completely. This goes into my 12 volt positive bus bar. Now the bus bar right here can connects, this one connects to the inverter because the positive power to the inverter. This is the positive power coming in from my solar controller. And then this is the 12 volt power going out to my fuse panel of the RV. Now I also have a 150 amp 
catastrophic fuse between the fuse panel and here, and I also have a shutoff switch. The other thing I have down here is a 120 amp DC circuit breaker. This is 12 volt energy coming in from my solar um, combiner. Before it goes to the solar controller, it goes through this 120 amp uh, circuit breaker. Now, a couple of other things I have down here just for convenience. I reinstalled this uh, GFI that was installed on this wall. I installed it up here. And then I have a, a, a power strip here so I can plug in other components I need here in the basement or if I'm working on something outside, it's just easy to connect. I also have the chargers from my drill batteries uh, connected here to the wall. And I think it's really important to have a smoke detector installed right here above all the batteries and my electrolytic components so if something starts to go bad in any of the system, it smokes and the smoke detector will warn me that something is going wrong. Okay. I'm around the corner from my inverter right here, a couple more key components. I've got my BVM 712 battery monitor from Victron. What this does is it monitors all the 12 volt energy that's used in the RV, all goes through this battery monitor. So the negative cable comes in here from the batteries on one side of the BVM 712, on the other side, I got it connected to a bus bar where I have all my loads. So I got my inverter connected right here. We got my negative wire to my solar controller connected right there. And this is the negative wire that connects to the ground so that all the 12 volt devices that are connected onto the BVM 712 are being monitored. So I know every electron that's coming in and out of those batteries. Now back here, I have my solar controller. Now this is a Victron. MPPT 150 100 solar controller and what this does I have six solar panels up top these are 24 volt solar panels that run usually between 30 and 36 volts and that power comes down from the solar controller it all combines in a combiner they run in parallel it comes into this cable right here this is a, uh, a two gauge paired black and, um, black and red cable right here so it comes down here now the red goes in it goes into that circuit breaker I showed you earlier and the negative goes directly into the solar controller. Now, when it comes out of the solar controller, so it takes that 30 or 36 volts that's coming into the solar controller and then converts it into a charge parameter on, at 12 volts and goes directly in, charges the batteries. Okay, I'm here in the basement again. This time, I'm right basically underneath the toilet of the RV right here. This area really was not used at all when I got the RV. The only thing that was down here was uh, the uh, old converter, which I left in there, but is not connected to the system. So the first thing that happens is the power comes in from the shore power cable, and then it goes into my 50 amp surge protector. Now this is a surge guard 50 amp surge protector that I have connected with a remote to a panel over there. After 120 seconds, it analyzes the power. After, if it realizes that it's good power, then it takes the uh, power right here and then goes into my smart face selector from AM Solar. What the, what the smart face selector does is it is it basically a transfer switch and enables me to have one inverter but supply power to both sides of my AC panel. So the power comes into my smart face selector. It goes out from one of the cables. It goes into the inverter, 120 volts into the inverter. After it comes out of the inverter, 120 volts, it comes back into the smart face selector. And then another cable comes out of here and goes to the fuse panel. Now the fuse panel is powered both sides from the smart face selector. So I get 120 volts to both sides with just one inverter. Now I'm on the roof of the RV where I have six 200 watt solar panels connected in parallel. So that gives me 1200 watts of solar. These are 24 volt uh, solar panels, which has a voltage around 30 or 36 volts. They're connected in parallel to my combiner box over here. Now this is a combiner box made by AM Solar and I'll use the uh, cable that I got from AM Solar. This is round uh, 10 gauge uh, cable uh, that has a positive and negative in it and this comes into my combiner box which um, connects everything in parallel that goes down to that uh, two gauge cable that I showed you that goes into my solar controller. Now I've done my best to organize the cables nice and neatly under the panels, along the air conditioner, so I don't have a lot of exposed cables out here on the uh, top of the roof. Now I also did my best to minimize the amount of holes that I had to drill into the roof to uh, put all this stuff down on the roof. When it came time to make a choice to for a mounting system to put my solar panels on the roof, 
I decided to use an adjustable mounting system from AM Solar. So what it, this system allows me to do, first of all, it allows me to angle the solar panels either this way or that way. There's four T-knobs on each corner of the solar panel and there's an L bracket attached to the roof. What this allows me to do when I was making my installation was to line up the solar panel just the way I want, make my marks, move the solar panel out of the way, install my L brackets, put two screws, put all my sealant around it. Once that was all fixed, I could put, go and mount my solar panel on top of that. Now the big addition thing I can do on top of that is that I can do maintenance on my solar panels anytime I want. I just remove these four T knobs, pull the solar panel out of the way, and it gives me access to under the solar panel all the wires and be able to do maintenance to the roof if I need to. I really didn't think I'd be using the angle brackets to angle my solar panels, but this is an experiment here. It's mid-October here in North Carolina. The sun is pretty low, and when I angle just three of my six solar panels, it increased my solar output on a clear sunny day by 150 watts. That means that if I had all six angled, my increase would be about 300 watts. So instead of pulling in about 600 watts, I'd be pulling in about 900 or 1,000 watts by angling the solar panels, which is a pretty dramatic increase. So if I get into a northern, a northern uh, latitude where I have late in the season and I want to increase my solar output, I can do it because I've got these angle brackets. Now I've left one of the most important components of my system here for last, and that is the Victron Color Control GX panel. What this does is connects all my Victron components by Ethernet cable right here to the Color Control GX. It does two things. One, I can see what's going on with all the components of my system right here on the panel, and I can make changes right here. In addition to that, the Color Control GX connects to my Wi-Fi system that I have in the RV. So as long as the RV is connected to the internet, I can use a smartphone and connect and see what's going on in my system anywhere in the world. Now let me just go over the components that are connected. First, you got the battery monitor right down here. This is the battery monitor display that comes with the BVM712. I really don't use it that much. I mounted it anyways, but this gives me my battery information. So right now we're at 93%. I'm drawing 89 amps of power and uh, 1,165 watts. And my voltage, my battery is 13 volts. Over here is telling me what's coming in from my solar controller. Right now I'm pulling in 708 watts from the solar controller. This tells me my AC loads. Right now I'm pulling almost 1400 watts in AC loads. I have my bedroom air conditioner on right now just so I could show you what's going on with the system. And then it tells me that the inverter is in inverter mode right now. So that is really awesome to be able to just open this cabinet anytime I want and see what's going on with my system. Right now, there's no grid power right now because I'm not connected to the grid. We're dry camping here in North Carolina. But later on, I'm gonna show you when I connect the generator what goes on there. One of the things I often do here at the control panel is turn the inverter off at night. I don't need any of that uh, parasitic uh, draw that I'm getting from the inverter or any of the small devices that are connected to the 120 volts. I don't need to draw that overnight. So if I go in here and I go to switch and I turn it to off, this will turn off my entire 120 volt system overnight, which is awesome because if I don't turn it off at night, I'll actually drop between 10 and 12% batteries at night just having that on. But if I turn it off, it only draws about two or 3%. So I almost do that every night when we're dry camping, I turn the inverter off. Now I just went outside and cranked on my Honda 2200 watt generator to show you what it looks like when it's on grid power. So it shows up the grid power right here whether I'm connected to a pedestal or my generator, that will show up right here. Now, when you get to a site, and whether it's a 20 amp or a 30 amp or a 50 amp pedestal, you have to go into the system and tell it how many amps you want it to draw. So yeah, I just hit the button right here. I go to input current limit. Right now, I have it set for 15, which is the maximum um, output that my generator can do on a continuous basis. So let's say, uh, I did, you know, my batteries are almost charged. I want to crank the generator down a little bit so it's a little quieter. I just hit the button here, crank it down to 7.5, which is the lowest it allowed me to go. Hit enter. I'm not sure if you can hear the difference, but it really cranked down the, uh, the sound of the generator. So now instead of 1700 watts, it's only pulling 826 watts. Now this is why 
whenever I go to a new campground, I got this sticker here, reset current limit, because we're always changing. We're either at 30 amp or 50 amp, or sometimes you know we're dry camping like this, and I have to remember to reset my current limit. But this is a really awesome feature of the system. The, the, uh, because of its hybrid capacity, the system will deliver the AC that you need to your unit. You just have to dial in how much power to either draw from the generator or from the pedestal. Well, honey, I finally finished our RV enhanced electrical system video. Are you happy? Yes, I'm happy, but I'm happy that it didn't take 16 months for him to build it. I actually did it in 10 days while we were quarantining last summer. If you're thinking about an enhanced RV electrical system with lithium batteries, whole RV inverter and solar panels, please let you know what you think of our system and use the comment section below to ask us questions. The video description will have a full list of all the items that we used in our system and some important links. And like always, you can leave a message on our Instagram and Facebook pages. If you found this video helpful and want to make sure you don't miss the full system install video, please consider subscribing to our channel by clicking this link below. Now I'll leave a link right over here for something for check out next. And maybe someday in the future, that link will actually be the full install video. Yeah, don't but hold But probably not too soon. <laughs> and remember, downsizing still makes sense.